The Logical Thinking Processes, presented by Bill Detmer. Part 2. The Gold Tree. So, Bill, I think, for having followed your uh, workshop last year, that you used to call the first tree we looked at the mm -hmm. IO map, or Intermediate Objective Map. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what you called it in your in your book, and you then went to another word that was probably easier for me to understand, which was really the gold tree. Mm -hmm. Could you explain a little bit how to build a gold tree? Yeah, uh, the gold tree is uh, intended to be the benchmark of system performance, irrespective of what is actually happening in reality. In other words it becomes the standard against which you evaluate reality to determine whether you're doing well or not. Call it a set of metrics, if you will. And it is oriented towards system level rather than process level. So in order to do that, you have to know, are we achieving the goal of the system? Well, in order to do that, you have to have a pretty clear definition of what the goal is. So the top of the gold tree is a statement of the organization's goal. Then below that, the next level is critical success factors. This is usually no more than three to five high-level terminal outcomes of lower-level activities uh, that in concert represent the achievement of the goal. So if you fail to achieve any one of those critical success factors, you will either not achieve the goal at all or its achievement will be severely degraded. Then below the critical success factors, uh, we have the functional uh, activities of the organization in the form of necessary conditions. So for example, the goal of the system might be to make more money now and in the future and one of these critical success factors would be to maximize revenue one of the necessary conditions under that would be to maximize sales. And in order to maximize sales, you have to have a large sales volume. But because uh, maximizing revenue also means uh, you have to make money, not just sales volume, then you have to have an optimum uh, mar contribution margin. Well, th these have to be determined. What, uh, what markets are we going to go for and uh, what will our contribution margin be? Each of these is represented in successively more detailed uh, necessary conditions. So what you end up with is a hierarchy that starts at the bottom that says, in order for a company like ours to, to succeed, we have to do these entry level tasks, which then enable us to satisfy these higher level conditions and then so forth up to the critical success factor. And finally, the goal. And uh, as you build this tree, you find that the network of necessary conditions, because they do apply to an interactive system, will likely support more than one of the critical success factors. And so there will be cross connections. The value to this is once this is done, as long as the goal of the system doesn't change and its mission, in other words, it stays in the same business, this tree doesn't change much at all. It could be good for five years or ten years. Okay. Uh, the only variations would occur if there are changes in the technology or changes in the marketplace. These would be variations that would take place in the lower level of the tree, but not the higher level. So the effort to do one of these trees is well invested because once it's done, you can use it again and again and again to analyze progressively how you're doing in the system.